people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend, it's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. This is actually a special edition of It's a Word Thing. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful for everything that you've done for us in this day thus far. Uh, you have given us our daily bread. You've given us a reasonable amount of health and strength. We are all clothed in our right minds, and so we are grateful that you have provided for us and that you've continued to protect us today. So as we sit together and break the bread of life, as we journey through the scriptures today, to see what you're going to say to us, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would clear our minds of everything, Father, that would hinder our hearing today, that you would remove every distraction that would hinder our hearing and seeing you today. Breathe on us afresh. Open the eyes of our understanding. Give us deep revelation and insight of the Word of God today. Let us see it in a fresh new way like we've never seen it before. You have said that this is the year of clarity. This is a part of that, clearing things up for us so that we can get a better understanding out of all of your getting, getting under Standing. I pray for every person that's watching the broadcast today. Thanking you, Father, once again for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. Be magnified, O oh God, be magnified in everything that I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. So, friends, we want to talk about that. There's a subject that we want to deal with today. There are some things that's, that's going on in our world and uh, we are, the world is in an uproar right now because of the first it was the pandemic, the COVID-19 and now the racism and the police brutality thing that raised his head again. And so I want to get into the word of God. And if you can pray, I want you to be prayerfully considering what it is that God is getting ready to say to you. Some of you may be offended by some of the things that I'm going to say that the Lord has given me to say. And some of you is going to be refreshing to hear what it is that God is, is going to say to you today. Um, so let's deal with, uh, I guess the subject would be why uh, our world is in the condition it is in today. Why our world is in the condition it is today. Why are we going through what we're going through? Why are these things happening in the world today? I'm not gonna put a, a color on it, uh, because we are, this is something that we all have to deal with. God told me to say, tell America to wake up. Remember, uh, we've been hearing that we are in it together. Well, here's a sign that we are not in it together. We are not, we are going through it at the same time, but we're not going through it together. And this is uh, proof that we are not all going through it together. Not saying that everybody is bad and uh, everything is bad, but Here's just one of those things that's proof that we're not all going through it together, though we are all in it at the same time. Here's the direction that the Holy Spirit uh, want me to go in as we talk about why our world is in the condition it is in right now and why we're going through what we're going through, why we're seeing the things that we're seeing in our world right now when it comes to prejudice, when it comes to uh, racism, when it comes to disease, and things that are going on in the world today. And here's what, what the Lord spoke to me as I was preparing to come today among all the things that he said. He said, humanity has a problem, listen, of always wanting to hold people responsible for things that other people has done, that other people have done. And I wanna read a verse, of, I wanna read these first couple of verses of scripture to set the stage for what it is that we're about to embark upon as we talk about what we're talking about, why our world is where it is right now. He said, humanity has a problem of always wanting to hold other people responsible for what other people have done. He said, but when God went into the garden, we go into Genesis chapter three, if you don't mind, Genesis chapter three, we're gonna start at verse number nine through verse 13. 
He said, when God came into the garden, he asked Adam where he was. And I need you to be prayerfully listening to what I'm saying to you today, because God want to know what position have you taken in the midst of everything that's gone on? What stance have you taken in the midst of everything have, that's going on? Have you become a part of the solution or are you adding fuel to the problem? What position have you taken? Because right now, God want to know where are you right now? And here's, here we are in, in Genesis chapter three, starting at verse nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Listen, and I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Have thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee thou should it not eat? Watch friends. Verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom thou gave to be with me, she gave of the tree. Watch this. And I did eat. Verse 13. And the Lord said unto the woman, watch now. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. L listen to what God is saying right now. He said, okay, what position have you taken in the matter? Adam, what position have you taken? Where are you and why are you in the position, condition, and posture you're in? Have you done things uh, uh, contrary to what I told you to do? Because this is why our world is where it is, because we are doing things contrary to what God has commanded us to do. Adam is hiding. Watch this. He hears the voice of God and he's afraid. Now he's afraid because he sinned against God. He's done things contrary to what God has said. So Adam wants to blame the woman, but it's not the woman's fault. It's a decision that Adam made. He asked, he asked Eve, woman, what have you done? She blames it on the devil, the serpent. It wasn't the devil's fault. It wasn't the serpent's fault. It was a decision she made to do what she did. Okay. He says, so humanity has a, has a problem with blaming other people for things, uh, uh, holding, wanting to hold people responsible for things that, that other people have done. And now once we deal with this, because you got to, let's look at the, the, the position that you've taken in, in, in what's going on right now. Have you become a part of the problem or are you a, a, a part of the, the, the solving of the problem, the solution for the problem? Uh, as I see the things that I see going on and hear what I hear going on, uh, there are not enough of us being a part of the solution. And God is not wanting us to take the same position that the world is taking. But let's stay on. Let's stay on track because I don't want to get off. And so we are all equally wrong is what the Holy Spirit said. He said we are all equally wrong. We are all. I, I love the Lord. He said we are all equally of wrongdoing. All of us. He said so you can't condemn uh, you. So you so I can't condemn you for your wrong until I address my own. I, I love the Lord family. And so this it, it may not sound like I'm talking about it the way you want to talk about it. But I have to talk about it the way the Holy Spirit is wanting me to talk about it. And since all of us are equally we are equally wrongdoing, have we are we are equally in the wrong and doing wrong. And so God said, before I can talk about the wrong in another person, I need to, I have to first address my own wrong. Come on, friends. I, I'm feeling my help right now already. And I know this, this may not be the way you want to hear it, but this is the way the Holy Spirit has given it to me. And I've sat and I've talked with the Holy Spirit. I've really sat and talked with him. And here's the direction he wants me to, to give us. And so we're going to get to where we need to be. Matthew chapter seven, verse three. Matthew chapter seven, verse three. <clears throat> Well, I'll start at verse number one, Matthew chapter seven. I'm going to start at verse number one. Judge not that ye be not judged for with with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, you shall be measured to you again. Watch this verse three. And why, why behold it thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider it not the beam that is in thine own eye. I. 
Watch this. Or how, how will thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat. Watch this. Let me pull out the moat out of thine eye and behold, a beam is in my eye own eye. Watch this, verse 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly, look, come on, friend, then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Verse number 6. Give not that which is unholy to the dogs, neither cast your pearl before swine, lest thou uh, uh, trample them under thy foot, and turn again and rend you and rend you. Watch this. Hallelujah. Now, now, now I want to go back to a verse. I, I want to go back to a verse because I, I want to go back to verse number five. And Bishop is not uh, degrading anybody, uh, um, talking about anybody. I'm using scripture. I'm using scripture to bring us to a clearer view and perspective of what's going on. He said, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Okay, God said humanity has a, has a problem always wanting to hold people responsible for, for things that other people have done. He said, but, but when God came looking, see, and when God come looking right now, and God's question to us is, what position, condition, and posture have you taken in the midst of everything that's going on? What stance have you taken? Well, we can see, we can see when it came to the, to the COVID-19, we failed that test as the body of Christ. But we've also failed the test as the body of Christ dealing with the, the racism and the prejudice as well. We failed that test too because the church is, is still responding uh, as the world. The church at large is still not responding the way that God wants us to respond. We're still not being the, the salt and the light that we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to join the world in what they are doing. We're supposed to be separate from the world and be salt and light in the world to show the world that there's a more excellent way. If the body of Christ, if the body of Christ, those of us who are part of the body of Christ, if we're going to walk alongside the world and do things the way the world do, then they're not going to learn. They're not going to see the more excellent way. We're supposed to be given directions and guidance to what's going on in the world. The Bible says, watch this, if somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. I know we don't want to deal with this. We don't, let's not be so quick to fight against one another. Because Jesus said, here, here's what the Bible says. God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And so we can't, we can't be judge and jury. We can't take matters in our own hands because we're only adding fuel to the fire. And so I need for you to really be paying attention to what God is saying, friend, really be paying attention. He said, we are all equally, we are all equally of wrongdoing. And so I can't talk about what somebody else is doing, friend, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. If there's, if I'm, if I'm contrary to the word of God, if I'm doing things that's contrary to the will and the word of God, then I'm equally wrong. I can't talk to you about the wrong you're doing if I'm not doing the right thing that I'm supposed to be doing as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so here's the reason. He said, our world is in the, in the state that it's in because of sin. Watch this, friend. We're in the condition that we're in in our world because of sin. There's something that we've been commanded to do that we're not doing one for another. There's something that God has commanded us to do that we're not doing one for another. He commanded us, watch this, we've been, been commanded to love one another and we're not loving one another. That's why the world is where it is right now. That's why the prejudice, the racism, that's why the COVID-19, that's why all of it is here because we have been commanded to love the brethren and we're not doing it. So that so we are all equal of sin right now. So I can't, I, I can't condemn you for your sin. Talk about your sin when I'm sinning as well, when, when I've taken the same condition, position, and posture that you have. Come on, follow me, friend. In, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, I know you probably know it by heart, just like you know 323 by heart, but I want to take you to Romans and read it to you anyway, just in case, um, because I'm a Bible man. I love the Bible, and I, I live toward, and I, I walk in it. Uh, so uh, Romans 3 and 23 is where I want to take you. Listen what the scripture says. 
This is, for all have sinned and come short of the glory. I mean, this is chapter three. I'm sorry, this is chapter three. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, so watch what God is saying right now. All of y'all in sin. All of you are in sin. Okay, so since all of you are in sin, you can't blame one another because all of y'all are in sin right now. I, I know it. I know it. I know you don't like this. I told you I was going to offend some people. I know it was going to be offensive to some of you and some of you are refreshed by it because because of what you've been hearing preachers so-called say to you. Well, this is a word from God for you. And I'm going to give you the word that God has given me in Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So so he, here's the issue, friend. Here's the issue. Right now, everybody is in sin. OK. And so because everybody's in sin, you can't do evil for evil. You can't render evil for evil. You have to beat evil with good. This is Bible, friend. You can only beat evil with good. The Bible says, watch this, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Things are not going to change in our world until we begin to love one another like God have told us to love one another. And so we can't get mad. I'm, and I'm talking about the whole world. I'm not just talking about sinners. I'm talking about the world, United States, because this is where it's happening in the United States of America. The church and, and unsaved and unsaved people, God is talking to everybody on the same plane field right now. He, because he say, watch this. He said, because all of y'all are sinning right now. He said, until, until somebody, until somebody do what I am saying, there's not going to be a change in the world. So you see, God didn't send Bishop to blame anybody in one specific person of anything. He said, America needs to wake up. America is in trouble. And what's going on in America is America's fault. Come on, friend. Come on. I told you how it was going to be. I told you I've spent time with God and this is wisdom from God. Bishop ain't making none of this up. I'm giving it to you the way God has given it to me. Now watch this now because we have to make sure that we understand what God is saying. Watch this. He says, he said, though our world is in the state and conditions in because of sin. Watch this. What is the sin? Because there is no love for the fellow man. Because you don't love your fellow man, you're not loving your fellow man. First John chapter 5. Follow me in your script. Come on, friend. Get your Bible. Sit down. Be still. And listen to what God is saying because this is going to help us all. This is going to help every last one of us. I promise you is going to, I'm sorry, we're in 1 John chapter 4 and we're going to start at verse number 7. The issue is, the reason things are going on the way it is because there's no love for your fellow man. We saw it, we've been seeing it ever since this pandemic hit. There's no love for the brethren. There's no love for the fellow man. So we can't keep lying to each other talking about what we're in together and what we're doing together when that's not true at all. We haven't been, we wasn't taking care of each other then and we're not taking care of each other now. Because anytime I can stand by and watch somebody else do wrong and not say something about it. I'm guilty of the wrong, just like that person who committed it. I'm just as guilty. In Romans chapter one, God talks about, Paul talks about how it's just as much sin for me to watch somebody do something that's, that's ungodly than for me to be doing it. The Bible says, watch this, if I look at a woman and I lust in my mind, I've already committed the sin. I know that's a little off kilter, but I'm, I'm showing you what the Holy Spirit is saying to us right now. I'm not here to point fingers at no one specific. No, no. God said, I want to talk to everybody right now because everybody's in sin and nobody is loving one another. That's why your world is where it is right now. First John chapter four. Come on with me. We, we in this for the long haul. Starting at verse number seven is where we're going to begin that. Hallelujah. We're going to be in at verse number seven. Now watch this. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Here we go. Verse eight. And he that loveth not knoweth not God. So, so if you don't know God who is love, then you can't love anybody. The sad thing is, is those of us who say we know God and we're not loving anybody. Come on, don't be mad, don't be mad. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. God pointed his love in our direction while we was all yet sinners. God, watch this, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Uh-huh. 
Come on, beloved, if God so love us, we ought to also love one another. If God so love us, we ought to also love one another. This is why the world is where it is, because there's no love in our heart for the brethren. There's no love for the other person. I'm only concerned about me and what happens to me and goes on with me. And if I can, to hell with the rest of the world and with everybody else. But since God, if God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God love us and because God love us and did everything he did for us, we are to love each other. That's the example that's been set by God for us. Verse number 11, come on. Uh, verse number 11, uh, yeah. Uh, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also to love one another. Verse, no man have seen God at any time. But listen, friend, man can see God if the body of Christ do like the body of Christ is supposed to do, then people will see God in this earth. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, watch this, God dwelleth in us, watch this, and his love is perfect in us. Verse 13, hereby know we that we dwelleth in him and he in us because he have given us his spirit. That's the do right kind of spirit that that Ezekiel talks about when God give us a new heart, he give us a spirit that causes us to do right. Verse number 14, and we have seen and do testify that the father sent his son to be the savior of the whole world, not just white or black, the whole world. Verse 15, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have, watch this, and we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Here's the position that you're supposed to take. And the reason we're in the, the situation in our world is because there's no love for the brethren. Verse 17, herein is our love made perfect that we may uh, have, have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because Fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him. Watch this. We love him because he first loved us. If, if a man say, I love God and hate his brethren, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have, who have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loved God love his brother also. Here's the, here's the issue, friend. Here's why we are where we are. This is why the pandemic is here. This is why the prejudice, the racism, the brutality, this is why all of this is here, friend, is because there's no love for the brethren. That because we don't, we don't love each other like we proclaim we do, like we say we do, friend. We're not, we're not loving each other. And God say, Here, I want to know what, listen, you got to uh, examine yourself and figure out what position have you taken? What are you doing? Are you name calling? I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Ghost. What are you doing? Are you name calling? You want to call people names. You upset. You upset. So you want to call people names and you want to blame folk. God said, I want to know, have you become a part of the solution or are you a part of the problem? And I'm going to say this to you. And we're going to get to it somewhere down here in the teaching. God did not call us to protest. He called us to prayer. I say he have not called us to protest. He's called us to prayer. If my people who are called by my name would pray. Nowhere in the Bible do you see anybody, none of God's people protesting but you see us praying. That's what God then called us to do. So, so here it is. So we're in this position, we're in this condition, and we're in this posture, and we're trying to figure out where it came from. Friend, I just told you where it came from. It's here because there's no love for the brethren. We all blaming each other. We all calling each other names. We all sticks and stones. Don't yeah, yeah, we all throwing stones and sticks at each other. But watch this now. God said y'all are all equally wrong because all of y'all are sinning. All of y'all, everybody is taking up the same posture. No, no. God said, you're supposed to follow me, child of God. You're supposed to follow me and do like I tell you because the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. I'm supposed to acknowledge God in all my ways, trust the Lord, uh huh, and acknowledge him in all my ways, lean not to my own understanding, and God is supposed to be directing my steps. That's what's supposed to be happening with the believer. We're not supposed to join in with the world and do things like the world do it. The world protests 
protest because the world can't pray. That's, I'm, the world protests because the world can't pray. It's a P, but it ain't the right one. They protest because they can't pray. They've been called to protest. That's what they've been taught to do, but we've been taught to pray. That's what we've been called to do, family, and that's what we need to be doing, friends. If we want to see a change in the world, prayer is what's going to change things. Protesting ain't changed nothing. It never have. Protesting haven't changed a thing, friend. If protesting was, 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 was the answer to, to, to fix everything, then everything would be fixed, don't you think? No, no. And the reason I hear him, Holy Ghost, I hear him talking. I hear him talking. Well, prayer ain't fixed nothing either. That's a lie from Satan, friend. Let me tell you something. See, it's because we're not praying enough. We're not praying right. That's why prayer, you don't see prayer working. But I see prayer working, friend. I got eyes to see and ears to hear. I see prayer working. I see prayer working. You can walk till your legs fall off. You can protest till your legs fall off. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But he said, listen, when you pray, say this. You, you see, I need to want what's going on in heaven to come down to this earth. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on this earth as it is in heaven. Not that God killed them or God killed them and God do this to them. That's not what God then called us to do. God have not called us to that. So here's where God wants you to be. God says, I need for you to understand, examine yourself and find out what position have you taken in this matter. Where are you standing? According to Psalms chapter one, where are you standing right now? Where are you sitting right now? Who are you agreeing with? Right now, you can't agree with Republicans. You can't uh, with Democrats. You can't sign with you can't side with left wing, right wing. Friend, you out of order if you do that. You are totally out of order if you do that. With love and kindness have I drawn them. You want to see change happen? Let's walk according to the word of God. Let's live according to this word and we will see change take place in this land. But before the world is going to change, the church has got to come back to God. The church got to take the right condition, position and posture so that change can be seen. But I heard the Bible said this, that judgment is going to start at the top. Church, let's get yourself together now because God can't talk to the world about what they are until he deal with his people. Hallelujah. Until he deal with his people, friend. He can't mess with the world until he deal with his own people. He says, so if my people would straighten themselves up, come out of their sin, out of their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sins and I'll heal this land. That's what your Bible say, friend. That's what your Bible say. This is why we're where we are. I got to wrap it up, friend, but I promise you I'll be right back here next week and we're going to settle this. We're going to deal with this a little bit more next week. So come on back and join me as we deal with this and why our world is where it is right now. May God bless you and may God keep you, friends, is my true prayer for you. Know that bishop is praying for you and I'll see you next week right here. Same time, same place. Bless you now. Bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye. People all over this world, yeah, people all over this world, say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.